HVR Z5. I have replaced the deck. It doesn't come with the drum mortar. Uh, I put the drum mortar from the old deck into the new deck. But now the new deck needs its uh, tracking tape pad adjusted to my, uh, because it's not been set up for the heads that are, are in the uh, unit. What you will need for this is your remote LANC tool which connects to the LANC port which is right here. And you will then also need this CPC 13 jig and here's the Sony part number above it. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's got those test points. Uh, that hooks into the board on the underside of the camera. There's a little plate that comes off here. Right, you will also need a dual trace scope. You might get away with a single trace. I have two traces up there now. Channel one and two. I'm going to now connect my uh, CPC 13 jig. I would lay it out there on the uh, bench with the pins facing downwards, like so. And then I would connect it into the straight into the port in here. You would then put a seventy five ohm resistor soldered between pins one and two. This is just a 75 ohm resistor I made up. You can get them from Sony. Um, let's see. It's uh, part number 1247-80411. But you can make up a 75 ohm or you can just get a 75 ohm. I then connect channel one pin 2. Channel 1 will be scope and then my channel 2 I put a 2 pin 4. Incidentally pin 1 is ground. Now we have to switch on the camera and put it into the play mode. Put the unit into the VCR mode. Press the play button. And the unit is up and working. Then what I have to do is put the LANC remote to the service position. i just get you a close shot of this. Now we have our three sets of digits on the uh, remote LANC connector. The first two digits is the page number, the second two digits are the address numbers and the last two digits is the actual data in the address. To change the page you press these page buttons and you can see it changed there on the page. Change the address and you just go up and down with them two buttons and these two buttons then are for changing the data. As you can see the zero, zero in the data on that address. And sometimes you have to actually write the data to that address. But in your service manual it will tell you when to write the data. We have the output of the heads going to channel one of my scope and the head switching is going to channel two 
I'm going to use the head switching tool for uh, synchronizing my uh, my uh, heads so I can uh, adjust the heads. Now, first, what we have to do is go to um, address ten, page zero, address ten. So we go address ten and check the data. C is a zero zero. It is zero zero. Now we go to page three. Address twenty six. Twenty six. And set the data to thirty one. Then I have to write that data to um, the memory of the camera. Now we got to go to address 33 on page 3. 33 and set that to 08. Okay. Here's a shot of my scope and the bottom trace is the head switching and you can see it's right in line with the switching of the two heads you can see it. This has been used to synchronize uh, this waveform because this waveform is very unsteady you can't synchronize to it it will roll across the screen. So I use this uh, head switch on, on pin 4 of the uh, uh, adapter for the camera, the CPC jig. Now I'm just going to get rid of the second trace. It will still lock on to the second trace. Um, bring down the intensity a bit. Maybe that's better. You can see it. This waveform has been set up already. But what I'll do now is I will put the tracking out by screwing in the uh, the guides each side of the heads, and then I will show you how to uh, um, set up the tracking on the unit. Okay, I'm going to first try and uh, do the take up guide first. This is the take up guide here I'm doing. As you can see there, on this corner here, bringing that up. Okay, I'm just going to leave it here and I'm going to do the supply side so you can do. This side of the waveform, there's a bit of a slope on it, but you can see the same waveform here on the other head. So we can just use that as a reference. That's nice and straight there. So you kind of get this. Uh, one up a little bit. This is harder to do because to make you put it in. Okay, we're right there, and that's as flat as I'm going to get it with uh, this um, tape I have in it. Um, as you can see, this is one head, and this is another head here. I'll just change it here. Don't mind the waving up and down, it's such a small signal, it picks up interference anywhere. As you, you can just look at it, it's flat, 
and this one here is flat as well. Um, you're getting a bit of a strobe effect here as well, but that's to do with the refresh rate on the uh, the uh, oscilloscope type uh, uh, scope. I just changed the time base to stop that uh, driving you mad. Um, it would be the same process with the factory alignment tape, the exact same, but it would be to a standard. I'm going to now um, uh, go back to my LAN connector and change that data I've changed. You've got to go to page 0, address 10, and set the data to 0, 0, which it is 2. Now we go to page 3, address 26. set the data to zero. zero. You have to press the right key now to store that information. Now we go to address 33. And I am going to change that data to zero. I don't have to press the right key for this. And immediately I do that, my RF waveform disappears off the oscilloscope. And then get rid of my service mode. Take my scope leads off. Incidentally, you can put this on the uh, 180 degrees and change this, put it around and put it in like this and you will get uh, waveforms on some of the pins but they won't be right. So make sure you put them in, orientate the pins like this when you're putting them into the service port in the bottom. Okay, I uh, hope that's of some help. To some engineer out there and um, thanks for watching 